Hello again, I'm Councillor Ross Hebbles from the Borough of Queenscliff, I'm the Mayor. Um, you probably would have remembered a few weeks ago I joined you for story time at home. Well, I'm fortunate enough to be back again. So a few weeks ago I read the, the book Defiance Goes to Sea, which is about a local cooter boat here in Queenscliff. Well, this week we're actually reading the next edition of that book, which is called Defiance to the Rescue, which also Defiance brings in a few other characters into the book this this time. Um, of course, as I mentioned last time, the book is, um, it's been created by Andrew Scorgi, so all these people are local people, so created by Andrew Scorgi, the words by Peter and Marianne Caddy, and the illustrations by Andrew Watson, and it was self-published. So we'll start the book, and then I'll give you a bit of a description as we're going through about a few of the characters also that appear in this book. In the museum, and lifted up high, Defiance was waiting for his new paint to dry. And although there were interesting things to see, it was not where this cooter boat wanted to be. For Defiance was young and his spirit was daring. He wasn't too fussed about the coat he was wearing. As he started to groan about the time it was taking, the lifeboat beside him gave signs she was waking. Her name was Queenie. And you can see Queenie here, Queenie the lifeboat. So this lifeboat, which is named Queenscliff, you can actually see it down at the Queenscliff Maritime Museum. So if you're ever in Queenscliff, want to go have a look at Queenie, uh, please do. Her name was Queenie and she'd long since retired, but her tales of rescue left the young boats inspired. Stories of shipwrecks would make her eyes glisten as they gathered around her eager to listen. Defiance, she said, be patient and wait. He said, I don't need this. I already look great. Queenie just smiled, took a big breath and sighed. It's more than just how you look, she replied. Your engine, mast and deck must be right. And your rigging's safe, so your sails hold tight. You must be maintained to be at your best. So you're fit and prepared for any tough test. Then her mind wandered back to a moment of glory. Defiance stayed silent as she relived this story. As people slept soundly in Queenscliff one night, news had spread that things were not right. The wreck bell rang out with a deafening sound as details came through of a ship run aground. The Arungal, while travelling along on its course, had felt the power of the ocean's great force. Now the wreck bell, there is a photograph here of the wreck bell. The wreck bell is still uh, up and it's at the bottom of Jelly Brand Street in Queenscliff. So if you, yeah, if you're coming down the Queenscliff to the museum or to the harbour, uh, drop it and say hello and have a look. Well, you probably wouldn't say hello to the wrecking bell. You can if you want, but uh, certainly go and have a look at the wrecking bell. High seas and strong winds called panic and grief as the ship ran ashore and was stranded on reef. Then Queenie shuddered, remembering the sight, how the rescue team sprung to action that night. Down the steep ramp off the pier she flew. She ploughed through the sea with her fearless crew. Towards Barren Heads, she was out on her way, where, perched on rocks, the Arungal lay. With her rescue team, she located the wreck. There were 90 passengers stranded on deck. And though the mighty, she rumbled and roared, they saved the lives of all those on board. Queenie said, things had run smoothly for me. I was cared for well and fit for the sea. If there's one thing from this story you learn, be a seaworthy boat from your bow to your stern. When his paint had dried and repairs had been done, Defiance set sail and was out having fun. Then he saw his friend Sally the life by the lifeboat shed. So off to meet her, the cooter boat sped. So you can see here, we've got a picture of Defiance looking great. And this is Defiance's friend's friend, Sally. Now Sally is actually a cooter boat from Sorrento, from the other side of the bay. Your paint looks terrific, Sally said with a smile, but you're away for a very long while. Defiance then told her of Queenie's advice that a boat needs more than just to look nice. They started at the shed thinking how it would be to act like a lifeboat and save ships at sea. All of a sudden, they received quite a scare. When past Point Nepean, they spotted a flare. 
So here's a photo of the flare. People, if you don't know what a flare is, it's used for safety reasons for shipping. So it's a bit like a, a big firework, which they, they shoot up into the air to get the attention of other boats or vessels. And in this case, obviously, you can see the Point Lonsdale Lighthouse um, um, looking out to sea and then realizing there's a flare. And also the two, the white and the black lighthouses in Queenscliff also can see the flare happening. The flare's red smoke filled the misty gray sky and the Point Lonsdale Lighthouse called from up high. The wreck bell must sound, ring now and make haste. A ship is in danger and we have no time to waste. The bell quickly sounded his anxious alarm. He didn't want anyone coming to harm. His clanging rang out all over the town. When the Coast Guard arrived, he was wearing a frown. We must work together and have to be quick. It's late afternoon and the fog's getting thick. So with engines roaring, the Coast Guard left land with the ferry and the pilot boat to offer a hand. Away from the harbour and out through the rip, they set out on a truly adventurous trip. And motoring along, not far behind, were Defiance and Sally with some action in mind. The sea was calm with just a slight breeze, so the rescue should be complete with ease, should be completed with ease. But the mist closed round them and the vision grew poor, and nothing was heard but the engine's great roar. The Coast Guard then grumbled, we can't see at all. Turn off your engines, we might hear them call. But big boats are helpless if their engines don't go, and fear for the ship was beginning to grow. The Cooter boats called, this rescue won't fail, as they switched off their motors and hoisted up sail. The shipwreck's distress came clear through the night and the cooter boats found him a desperate sight. So you can see the cooter boats and the big ship here in the, in the background. Defiance worked quickly and began to use force, trying to set the ship back on its course. He pushed it and pulled it and gave it a nudge, but however he tried, it just wouldn't budge. Sally knew their work had only just started, so back for the big boat, she quickly departed. The rescue needed their muscle and power, and they returned to the shipwreck in under an hour. The Coast Guard gave orders to keep him afloat, so ropes were secured by the young pilot boat. He moved with great speed, he was willing and able, till the ship was held safe and with strong rope and cable. The boats in the harbour let out a cheer as the town's new heroes began to draw near. Three cheers for teamwork, hip hip hooray, and the two little boats who helped save the day. Defiance and Sally were talking like mad, how Queenie must hear of the adventure they'd had. They'd tell of the work of the whole rescue crew, sorry, of the whole rescue crew, but somehow I knew she already knew. That's the end of the story. There's also at the back page, it just shows the Defiance and Sally and also shows, shows some of the other characters in the Queenscliff. So we've got the Queenscliff Ferry, we've got the, the Wreck Bell, uh, their local Coast Guard, pilot boats, and also, as I mentioned earlier, we have our lifeboat. All these are still able to be seen in Queenscliff. So feel free, come down and visit and say hello to all the boats that are part of this story. And thank you again for joining me at Storytime at Home. Thank you.